Hi everyone, welcome back. So in this problem, I'd like to take a look at convolution in Green's formula. And specifically for part one, we're just asked to compute the convolution of t with itself, t. In the second part, we're asked to compute the convolution of e to the minus kt with an another exponential, e to the at. And then in part b, we're to use the result from part a, as well as Green's formula, to solve x dot plus kx equals e to the at. And specifically, we're interested in the rest initial condition solution to this formula. OK, so I'll let you think about this problem, and I'll be back in a minute. Hi, everyone. Welcome back. OK, so for part one, we're asked to compute the convolution of two functions, t with itself. And I'll just quickly write down the formula for a convolution. So if I have two functions, f and g, then the convolution is defined as, in this case, the integral from 0 to t of f. So the function f evaluated at, we're going to use tau as the integration variable, multiplied by g t minus tau d tau. So notice how the variable t appears in two places in this uh, formula. It appears in one place in the argument of g, and it appears in the bound of integration. Meanwhile, tau is the, integrate int, uh, it's the variable we're integrating over, and tau appears in two places as well, one in f and one in g. OK, so if we're interested in t convolved with t, we have the integral from 0 to t of tau times t minus tau. So notice how f is just t and g is t. So when we insert tau and t minus tau into the, the function, we end up just getting tau times t minus tau d tau. And just expanding this out, we have t times tau minus tau squared d tau. So in the integral, the variable t always appears just as a constant. So in this case, we have t tau integrated becomes t squared over 2 when I integrate from 0 to uh, t. Tau squared integrates to 1 third t cubed. And 0 drops out from the other end of the integral. So we end up with t cubed. 1 half minus 1 third, which is equal to 1 sixth t cubed. Okay, so there's the answer we're looking for. For part b, or for question 2, again, we have another computation to do. So we have more integrals to work out. And in this case, it's two exponentials. So we have 0 to t. The first one's going to be e to the kt, sorry, e to the k tau. And the second one is e to the a t minus tau d tau. So I can just expand things out, and I get e to the a t times e to the minus uh, a plus k tau d tau, 0 to t. And again, because t is just a dummy variable in this integral, we're not integrating over t. I can just think of e to the at as a constant. So I'm really just integrating the function e to the minus a plus k tau. And when I integrate this function, I get 1 over minus a plus k e to the minus a plus k tau evaluated at the bounds 0 and t. So 
So the negative sign here just flips the bounds. So we have a plus k. Substituting in 0 just gives us 1. And then substituting in t gives us e to the minus a plus k t. Okay. And I can expand out, multiply out e to the at. And when the dust settles, we have e to the at minus e to the minus kt. <clears throat> Okay, so this is just the uh, the computation of the convolution e to the minus kt and e to the at. So note now, if if for example k were to equal negative a, we would have zero in the denominator and zero in the numerator. So one way to con compute the special k when case when k is equal to negative a is to use L'Hopital's rule and differentiate the top and the bottom. Uh, for example, with respect to k. Another alternative way of computing uh, the special case when uh, a is equal to negative k is just to plug in e to, the, uh, e to the k and then just work out this integral and you'll obtain a different answer. Okay, and now lastly for part b, we're interested in the differential equation x dot plus kx equals e to the at. And we're interested in finding uh, the particular solution that has rest initial conditions. So for example, x of 0 is equal to 0. And uh, we want to use Green's formula. So just recall that uh, there's the impulse response formula for the weight function w. which solves the same differential equation, but with a delta function on the right-hand side. And w, in this case, as we've seen in lecture, is actually e uh, to the negative kt when t is bigger than 0, and it's 0 when t is less than 0. So notice how e to the minus kt is exactly the function that we convolved in part a. Uh, specifically, we convolved it with e to the at. So for example, Green's formula says that the particular solution that has rest initial conditions is going to be the weight function convolved with the right-hand side of the differential equation, e to the at. In this case, on the domain of integration, for the convolution, w is just e to the minus kt. So we have e to the minus kt convolved with e to the at. So Green's formula gives us uh, the equation for the solution to this differential equation, which has rest initial conditions. And specifically, we've already worked this out from part a, so I can just write down what the answer is. It's 1 over a plus k e to the at minus e to the minus kt. And just as a quick check to make sure that we've done everything correctly, we can plug in t equals 0. And when t equals 0, we have 1 minus 1, which gives us 0. So indeed, this x is the solution to this differential equation, which has rest initial conditions. OK, so I'd. Uh, just like to conclude this problem, a uh, quick recap. Uh, we worked out several convolutions. And uh, specifically, we were able to use Green's formula, uh, in addition to the convolution that we worked out, to compute the solution with rest initial conditions to an ODE. Uh, moreover, Green's function is very useful because notice how we could have computed the convolution for any right-hand side function here. So uh, in some sense, we're able to generalize and find solutions to differential equations which have arbitrary right-hand side forcings, not just sines and cosines, periodic functions, or other simple functions which we've been looking at in the past. So I'd like to conclude here, and I'll see you next time.